guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and uh, as you notice, I've got a big fat head today. I'm zoomed in, so you can you can see all my glorious face because I've got a very special guest joining us today. It's going to be the one and only Coach Greg Adams, sir. Welcome, Back. welcome. Back in here, I'm zoomed in too. So we got two. I got a milk dud head and. <laughs> I don't know what kind of heads you got going well, that, there, but they're going to see two heads talking today. That's why I had to zoom it in, because otherwise you just saw me way little tiny and, and your beautiful face all filling up the screen today. So Yeah, man. Uh, chocolate and skin. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Coach, we've been we've been way overdue for a, a fun interview. It's been a long time. I think the last one we did was probably, what, close to a year ago now, wasn't it? It had to be more than that, man. I don't know. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. We've been talking about it, and you know how we get. It's it's busy trying to create content, but I'm glad we're here. Yeah, me me too. You know, you were one of the first content creators that I came across on YouTube and 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 kind of explained the, the manosphere a little bit to me. And, of course, you're probably the first one they started headhunting for when uh, – when they decided to to talk bad and, and come after all of us guys in the manosphere, so yeah, uh, it now, was a. Uh, it, it, sorry, I had to cut you off. I actually got lucky and um, came in at a time when a lot of the our predecessors were getting squashed. So I rode a wave of kind of undercover, and and they allowed me to grow until they caught me. <laughs> well, then, uh, you know, that's what happened. Yeah, I think I think what happened is, you know, the the whole we, at one point in time, we, we could say just about anything we wanted. And then before you know it, it's like, well, probably I think I can say feminism once a, a video. And then it's like, well, I can I can I can't say uh, more than once a video. And then, well, I can't say that anymore anymore. So now, I mean, you are I think you're best known for all your um, creative ways of of dodging yes. the uh, of dodging the, the YouTube algorithms for, for catching your language. Yeah, the, the coded language, man, it's always kind of coming up with something else. Sometimes I come up with it on the fly or borrow it from somewhere else or a, a song. And um, then it becomes a part of language that gets censored. Yeah. Because then they figure it out. They're like, oh, 304. All right. that We know what that means. And then now you can't say it. Do, do they really take you? They, they give you a hard time for that now, too? Well, it's you never know what they're giving me a hard time for That's because true. you know it's pu busted Pillsbury biscuit can would be <laughs> very you would think no one would know what that is, but now when you explain it, then people can get offended. Oh, I right? see what you're saying, and that's how people will flag you. So, so do the algorithms pick that up on you, or or is it something where when you say it, you think somebody's manually going to complain to YouTube? I think it's the manual complaints that I get more than anything because the algorithm doesn't know what I'm talking. About. They can't because uh, you know I've had a lot of people who. You know, they speak as English as their second or third language, right. and they don't even know what I'm talking about. Half the time. They're <laughs> like, I love your stuff, but what does this mean? What does that mean? What does this mean? So they don't even know. So there's no way the algorithm could know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's true. I, I think uh, I know a lot of times when I'm reading the comments on some of my videos and they're talking about all oh, these 304s and all these garden tools and all. I think you're the yeah. one that, that pretty much created half of, if not two three quarters of this stuff out there. I would like to believe that uh, I've created a good language, good amount. Somebody has a dictionary. They've been emailing me dictionaries. I requested on my channel. I said, email me all the stuff that you think I came up with. Like, people have been emailing <laughs> me all this stuff. like, And I'm reading and I'm like, yeah, I borrowed that. Somebody else said that. And I came up with that type of deal. Well, now, you know, coach, you're, uh, if I'm correct, I think you're just a year or two younger than me, actually. You're, uh, you're in your later forties. Is that correct? 46. Okay. So I'm yeah, I, this last month. I got you by three years. So I'm, I'm the old man in the room here. Hey, the elder statesman. Of the that, day. <laughs> what got you, um, what, what was the, the straw that broke your back and you, and you said, that's it, man. Like I, you call it the free agent lifestyle. I'll call it being a better bachelor. We call it guys going our own way, even though, a lot of guys, like the guys going their own way is everywhere from going monk and, and staying away from women completely to, hey, I'm still dating. I'm just not going to give them access to my finances if this thing ends. What brought, what was the the relationship or the situation that went, you went, that's it. I'm out. I'm out. Man, I dated this young girl. This is several years after my divorce. So people always think that my marriage and my divorce crushed me. And I'm like, no, that was, that freed me. Um, and it, it was pretty amicable, the split and the breakup and everything. The divorce was bad, but but that wasn't it. I dated this young girl and I, I don't know if it was a generational thing or if it was I was just coming out of a marriage. So this is my first long term relationship, you know, three years after my separation. And I was going to give it a try. I was going to give it the old college try. I wasn't going to just, you know, be a player or anything like that. 
And uh, man, she dragged me in circles. I was not ready. I was not ready. She was hitting me with all kinds of things. And so I'm going to deal with my ex. And and she's, you know, she was a very much a social climber, right. uh, which she'd love to go out to events. And, you know, if a guys would uh, invite her to a a private suite at the LA Kings game, she'd go, you know, and, I'm, right. and I'd be like, wait a minute, what, what, what is going on here? And um, she had me looking up stuff on the internet. So that's what <laughs> happened. I was like, can you, does your girlfriend go to dinners with her ex? You know, I'm just typing this in right. and I'm right. getting feedback from forums and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden Tom like his videos started. Getting yeah. Into. And that was the, and then I'm on YouTube. I really wasn't looking at YouTube like that. And then I'm looking at Tom like his videos, then Sandman's videos are popping up, you know? Yeah. And then it was just like, that's how it went. Now, did you, uh, if you don't mind me asking, like with this young gal, did you ca- catch the feels? Were you? Were oh, you I was, ca- I was into her. I, you know, the whole love, we were talking about that. She was talking about marriage. Uh, she was a social climber. She definitely had what I would consider a sugar daddy. Uh, she liked older guys. Yeah. And um, what happened was she had a guy that she was, dating before me. And so she was 28 when I met her and I was 37 ish. And what happened was her previous boyfriend was 55 millionaire, multimillionaire. Right. And I think when she was getting older, he kicked her to the curb <laughs> type of deal. Like, you know, you're getting old. I'm not going to marry you. So she, she was getting the, I need to get married. Oh, okay. I need to rush. So I was the next sucker in line. Gotcha. That's exactly what happened. So she was like, I'm not going to marry the multimillionaire guy, but this guy seems to have his head on straight. He, you know, he has his priority straight and I need to get married. I'm 28. So she's looking at the clock, 29, 30. Right. And so it was me. That's so, what happened. So you were the best of both worlds. You're not old and dusty and super rich. You're yep. successful, still athletic, good shape, a little bit yep. younger, that kind of thing. And I've, I'm commitment worthy. I've already showed that I'm willing to make a commitment. And so she's like, all right, this, I think she really just said, this is the biggest sucker deal that I could take. I mean, he's set up and he's not the best. He's good. He's good enough. And um, she played me pretty well. I mean, I think she was genuinely like me. She did. It wasn't like an evil intention, but I always have to tell guys, you have to know why she's there. Right. She's not there because she loves you. There's something else. And matter of fact, I'll just tell guys this. When I broke it off with her, she was nervous. She was saying things like, well, now. I got to find another guy like lightning has to strike again, but I'm going to be older. Right. Right. So she was already using the countdown clock on me to try to get me, prevent me from breaking up because she was like, Oh, now I'm in trouble. That's basically what she was trying to say. She said, now I got to meet somebody and I'll be 32 by the time that might happen. And then now I got to get them down the aisle. I'll be too old. Yeah. She basically was having that conversation with me. I, to me, it sounds, I think a lot of times, you know, we, we joke around about the wall and we talk about the wall and, and for different women, that wall is sooner or later. Yep. Like you, you and I both uh, noticed that there's, there's 28, 26 year olds. You're like, Ooh, girl, you've led a rough life. And there's 40 year old women that are smoking hot and successful and, and, and got their bags together. So a lot of times I think people talk about the wall being an age, but for each woman, it, it's different. And I think they, I, I, it may not be in the forefront of their mind, but I think every woman notices when the attention starts getting pulled back a little bit and those dates don't come quite as easy and it takes a few more minutes in the makeup mirror to make things look quite as, as nice and fresh as they once were. And I think they feel the sand through the hourglass and, and they start freaking out on that. And what's amazing to me is women will see this over, I mean, the, the information's on the internet. We talk all the time about you know, these girls that are like, man, I hit 30 X or 40 X and it's just not there anymore. And I used to have the attention. There are millions of those stories. I mean, you and I, that's our bread and butter talking about that stuff, hoping that women will learn, Hey, quit chasing after the player. Cause he's got too many options. Find yourself a good stable man while you're young, while you're pretty, while you're, while you're in your a game and, yep. and, and, and hook your, your wagon or hook your wagon to his horse, I guess you could call it and, and do, and women just refuse. They just think I'm going to live the good life until the end. Well, this, like this girl, she's actually was doing what we suggest women do. She's 28. Right. Yeah. And so she was already pushing her chips in going, okay, well, I'll write it out. Now, ultimately she probably would have divorced me, but that's, that goes besides the point. Right. What the point was she realized 
something that we always tell women to realize. She realized it at, I would say, a critical time in her life to start acting right. It's not that she can't get attention anymore. It's she can't get commitment. Right. It's the commitment that some of these women are getting. So they're getting the attention and they're confusing that as options. But you and were like, but you at that point were willing to to give the commitment to some degree. Right. Yeah. And, but, I, and so she held on to me because of that. But what but she threw it away. Ultimately, what she how did, did how did she do that? She, she she ended up throwing that away by not willing to fully engage, like not not getting into the commitment type of relationship. She says, yeah, I'll be committed. And she made good money. She was making $300,000 a year. She's a lawyer. Right. Um, and uh, she worked in the financial uh, sector. I can't say the company, but it's a very well-known company. All right. But um, yeah. uh, she was set as terms of her income. She's going to make half a million dollars a year by the time she's 32. And um, what she didn't want to do was let any of that go. She was like, okay, I'll get you. Like essentially, she was gonna be like, "You raise the kids. You do like I, you be the house husband. I'm gonna right. make a half a million dollars by the time I'm 30, 32, 33. But in that case, didn't she look at you and say, "Well, I, I want, I do want what we have, but I, I want it with someone that's younger or someone that's hotter or someone that's whatever." Like, right. like what was it that made her say, um, "I'm not in on this"? Um, well, I was the one that pulled the plug. So, oh, okay, it wasn't like, okay. yeah, no, I pulled the plug. I pulled back because. The, the direction it was going, I was just going to be a handpicked husband. I was oh, just going to yeah. be somebody underneath the thumb of her because, right. you know, it was one of those things. It was kind of like the things that we're trying to teach men. She was a modern day womanist yep. or feminist. Yep. We could say it over here. Yeah, we, over here She's on Locals, modern, you can say whatever you, you can want. say what we want. So I'm going to make a Locals account here, <laughs> here man, at some point. But she was a modern day feminist. I didn't at that point in my life, I didn't know what that meant. Right. And this is why we're instructing men. And I had to learn about what that was. She was a career woman, the focus on her career woman. Um, she worked, you know, 80 hours a week. She would never, you know, so it would have been a bad deal for me. Well, it would yeah. have been a great deal for her. Yeah. And she, I didn't, she and once I realized it would have been a bad deal, I pulled the plug. Well, she would have come home with the bank. And then on top of that, you would have been like, hey, hey, baby, how about, you know, we have a little bit of fun in the bedroom. And oh, I'm too tired. I got this. I got that. And and so she was actually trying to provide the man's role. And, yes. and you'd be be at home cooking in an apron like a bitch. Yes. And that's what she saw. She yeah. literally saw that she was an alpha female. But the funny thing was in the bedroom, she was a submissive. Yeah. So yeah. that was the trick or that was the flooding trick that she put on me is she fully was submissive in the bedroom. Yeah. I mean, and she was never turned me down and and all that stuff. But the problem is, yeah, that's only portion of the relationship. Right. Right. That's only one part. So I'm not going to get fooled by the sex. The right. sex is great. Yep. She was fully submissive. But then 85 percent of the relationship was this BS, you know, this cluster F of the dynamics of the relationship. Look at you. Bad. You can you can curse like a sailor and still watching your language. You're so used to YouTube. <laughs> I'm too used to it now. I got to speak in code. Now. <laughs> well, I tell you, I think I think that's something that women don't understand today is that if you want an effeminate, you know, um, baby, you run the, the relationship kind of guy, yep. you'll get that, but you, he will make your panties drier than the Sahara desert. Yes. And, and she's going to be looking for that guy that's out there chasing his and getting his and is cocky and, and maybe not responsive to, to her. And, and, and what I, I what, something that I've noticed is if a man will give up his career path or his life or his drive for what's best for him, if he'll give that up for a woman, not only does it put her in the driver's seat, but they hate that guy. They hate that man. They may say they want it. They may say they'll love it, but they end up hating that guy in the long run uh, because they will go after the man that's going after his. That's why these, you know, these very strong charismatic guys that are like, fuck you, babe. Like, I don't, I don't even need you. Like I'm getting mine. Those are the ones the women say, oh, I hate that asshole. Also, oh, I wish he'd date me. And they want that guy. They, see, that's the that's the catch twenty two with with women. They say one thing, but the reality, their actions are another. Uh, if 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 you're that guy, I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go with a woman. Why'd you give up a woman that makes three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year, or the potential to make that? Well, I seen the opposite side of that. Like you said, then she's gonna be going. Well, you know, you're she's gonna not respect you after the on the long haul. And then what's gonna happen is you'll either be a or you'll find out she's having an affair and she'll be like, I don't care. Like, what are you going to do? Right. Uh, what are you going to do? Leave me. I make $500,000 a year. So you could, but you made that deal. Yep. You made that deal because she made that income. Now she's going to walk all over you. Now it works the opposite for men. When men have that type of leadership, the woman, 
Uh, oh, he doesn't go well. I, I guess maybe he'll say, I want a freak in the sheets. Right. Maybe he will. He'll never leave his wife, though, for it. Right. Well, I, th- I think uh, the the dynamic that I, I always seem to see, at least, again, when, when you're reading this kind of stuff and you listen to guys' stories, is the guy that's doing very successful, if his wife stays, or wife, girlfriend, whatever, doesn't matter how successful he becomes. If she keeps herself attractive and she makes herself sexually available and she provides utility around the house, he's good. good. That, 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 the only time I ever see guys or really hear much about guys is when she lets herself go or she's not putting out anymore or she's not carrying her weight around the, the house. Guys still like a traditional woman, but women have been told somewhere along the line, oh, don't be traditional. Oh, if you stay home with, with kids and keep yourself slim for him, uh, you're, you're losing out on, on life. And, and women, I think women are trying to change. Men aren't. I mean, well, not real men. Like real men are not changing. Right. You, right. You, may, yeah. you may get the, the guy that wants to order a soy burger and cry on your shoulder at a movie, but, <laughs> but real men are not changing. And I, I think that's where they're getting it screwed up. Well, the, the proof is in the pudding. The commitment rates are down. Just the long-term relationship commitment rates are down. Uh, marriage is down. Childbirth is down. So guys are slowly walking away. There's something to be said for a red pill and all of these um, spinoff of acronyms. But I think it's have having an effect on the marketplace because guys are going, no, I'm not making that deal. No. Why would I make that deal? And you're going to gain weight. You're, you know what I mean? Right, you have a bad right. attitude. And um, th- so the traditional model, I think what's happening, I, I kind of made a video about this. I said, men want to be traditional. You know, men are, try- men are the ones affected by this carousel. Right, right. We're the right. ones affected because you're, we're the ones making the videos. What happened to we're all the real women, right? Right. Um, so we're the ones that really would love commitment because we want someone in our corner, but there's not enough out there that we can find. Right. And I know some ugly women are watching me right now saying, not me, I can do it. Well, you're ugly. So the problem is if you can get some actually halfway attractive women to commit to this, then it might help you. Right. But, uh, uh, you know, just because you're a nice woman, we're not talking about that. You still got to qualify on the attractiveness scale. Well, you know something, though? The thing is, if you if you look back in history, even uh, let's say a woman is unattractive. She would still find an unattractive man that would love her and provide for her and take care of her. And, but, but now because the scales are all screwed up and, right. and the women, their values, they, they look at themselves as more valuable than perhaps they actually are um, right. in the relationship. I'm not talking about it just in general, uh, but in the relationship, women think, well, I'm bringing what he brings to the table. So I'm his equal. And, and men just number one are not into that. And, not into that. and number two, um, you know, women rolling in in their in their 30s saying, well, my body count is higher. I've had lots of partners. Most men say, look, there's one thing. I, I put it like this. Imagine if a man came to a relationship with a woman and say, I used to be a millionaire, but every girl I dated, I gave her twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 until I got no money left. But now I want to be with you. <laughs> you know, that's the same thing when women are like, you know, I, I used True. to have just a very low partner count, but for the last 10 years, I just been out there, uh, you know, letting guys slang it on me. And now I'm coming up to you and I've had a ton of partners. I got some, maybe some baggage. I got maybe some kids. I got maybe uh, the inability to give you anything special because everybody's had it and they had it for free. But I want you to yes. promise me forever and guarantee half your income if this doesn't work out for the same thing that everybody else had for free. And that's where men are like, what? Are you nuts? Are you nuts? Yes. Well, you talked about the dynamics being off when we and I talked about ugly women. Well, like you said, though, a guy would go with that woman if he got the other things. But the problem is that guy is that she came in the market. She came in his range. The range was actually lined up right. Right. You know? Right. Uh, you know, we can always reminisce about the past as it being better, but the range was actually lined up. So if you were a five as a guy, you could get a four a five or a three, maybe a six. And yep. it was, it was there. But if you're a guy now, you're not going to get, and you're a five, it's hard to get the five to realize she's a five. Or Man, a four or if you're a, if you're a five, a five, it's hard to get a two to give you the time of day. Yeah. So these people are going, uh, the twos are going, Oh, hell no. And they don't realize that they're going to be 35 and then come up to you. Oh, and it's like, well, it's too late now. I mean, this yep. is just way too late in the game. You're not offering anything. Like you said, though, the 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 example that you give, I'm not going to invest now. Right. It right. just doesn't make sense. 
Well, since you've kind of flown solo since that, um, I, I think I've heard you say that, that you've dated younger gals out there. Yep. Um, like you're in your forties like me. And a lot of times I'll tell guys, Hey, you know what? Secure your bag, get your job squared away. Don't worry about, Oh, I love this job. Do that shit later in life. Get yep. your money, get your, uh, what was it? I think it was, uh, in, in, was it Scarface where, where Tony was saying like, uh, first you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the push. Uh, what I'm telling young men today is, hey, get your bag, get your money, get your investments, get your feet under your ground because you are at your lowest power in life. And then as you age, you you will gain the power because you, you got money, you got a good head on your shoulders, you're not shy around women, you can talk some game. Well, you being in your 40s, you're still dating it. Am I correct on that? Yep. Well, uh, yeah, I am. I'm on the marketplace. I'm in the marketplace. Okay. Uh, now, the women that approach you, not necessarily you approach, but the women that you find that are interested in you. Are they your age? Are they older? Are they 20 somethings? What, what is your kind of your discovery as you've been out there? It depends where I am. I just, it depends on my, it comes in all, all ranges to be fair, but uh, the, the easiest, what I call layups are older women. Yeah. You know, these women are 42, 41, 46, 48, 52, you know, <laughs> they're throwing and I'm going, I mean, it's a, it's a layup, but they're throwing up a deflated ball at that yeah, point. I'm like, I mean, what the hell? Like it. And, but the problem is you get with them. Like you show them one, you think you go on one date and they want a commitment. Where is this going? And, right. you, and you're going, wait, hold, hold on for a second. We're not rushing this. Right. Uh, relax. First of all, number two, I got a million 52 year olds and 49 year olds and 46 year olds after me. So right. what are you, it's kind of like the, re the reverse roles of what young men are going through. So I'm glad we're talk talking to young men. Uh, I know young guys hate hearing this. Why do we have to wait? And why do we have to build ourselves up? And this sucks because all that testosterone you got in your body, you right. want to poke every hole that you want to see. And you want them to all fall down for you. But that's not how it works. Right. The, the story goes like this. You get the money. You get the power or status. That's it. And the women come down at age to whatever. Okay. So young guys, listen to this. Whatever age women you're messing with now you get more of them when you get older and when you have more power and money that's just how it works i know it sucks yeah uh but that's just how the world works yep yep i i found in my 40s um i get interest anywhere from young 20s up through my age and and again well, people the, don't people don't think that's true yep they don't yep. think that's true and people will come to my channel oh there's no way young women and i'm going there's younger women that will never mess with young guys. Right. And right. they always find me. They, hey, they I, find me and they find other men. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, daddy issues are a thing and they're not necessarily bad when you're 40 or something year old man. I'm telling I you. I don't complain as long as they're not crazy. I mean, <laughs> well, I've had, you know, as young as, I mean, I've had as young as 19. Yeah. Um, I don't try to go there too often, but I was like, well, this is a layup. Yeah. Um, and uh, you're, you will be surprised and, you will be surprised at the amount of younger women that are actually attracted to older guys. Right. Well, I think and it's people don't understand it. I, I think, uh, you know, when I was in the Philippines and I was the uh, same thing in Thailand, but this was a conversation I specifically had in the Philippines because you'll see a lot of guys that are in their fifties, sixties over there with little, you know, 22 year old, very smoking hot pin girls. Yep. And I talked to, to a, a girl that I was actually going on dates with. And I said, so is it a money power kind of thing? And she said, no, we're very much still a patriarchal society where, you know, b men are boys up until their X age. And usually it's about 10 years to 15 years older than women. So a 20, your 20 year old woman looks at a 35 year old man as equal because the the right. boys are the boys are boys and and they're they're kind of a little crazy over there where they want a guy that's a little more mature that can say you know what I don't need to bang everything that moves you give right. me what what you got and I'm okay staying with you plus they they do come with a good head on their shoulders they're not you know testosterone driven in every decision they make and the interesting thing and this is what surprised me wasn't about the money when I was in Thailand and when I was in the Philippines the the young gals I was going out with they were insistent, let me pay, let me take care of this. You're visiting me, you're spending time with me. Let me thank you by not only paying for the dinners, but the, you know, the other fun that comes in a relationship. That really surprised me. And I think there are, there are women here that, that while they may not pay for things like they did over there, they do say, hey, you know what? I know he's not gonna be trying to uh, sneak around behind my back and, and nail everything that moves. 
and he's got a good head on his shoulders, and he's got his finances down. So where if if we run into a problem, he's got my back. And I think women still want that kind of rock to lean on when things go bad. And the younger women, it's it's even more important for them. Well, you, you're hitting on all the right points. Uh, again, because we're talking about you get the money first and then the power. And like you said, it's not the money right away. You know, it's right. not like you owe me this and you pay me and you wine and dine me. It's the ability to do that, right? right? And so if you had the ability to take her out to a $200 dinner, she wants to know that she doesn't have to get into this tug of war right. with a, uh, a guy her age. Well, you pay in half and I can't afford the tip. She wants to be able to have uh, you valet the vehicle, her get out like a princess. You know, the whole, right, right. I always tell people, just romance them, sell them a dream for an hour and a half. And she wants to be able to do that with comfort and not feel guilty going it so yeah it's not the fact that she wants x amount of dollars it's the comfort level that money brings and a lot of women especially in eastern type cultures they really lean on that because they have to and they're not going to be they don't want to be alpha western culture is a little bit different and we have all of these things related to age which gets out of context you know right you're supposed to be with somebody your same age and you're like well what is their emotional age right uh, some right. people are older but they're immature and women are finding that out. So I think what's happening, you got seeking arrangements now, uh, which a lot of women are able to reach to older men if they have this desire yep. for whatever it is, if they just want dollar amount or if they just want somebody that's stable, um, they're able to reach to that because the rewards to them are they can relax and be who they want to be. Doesn't right, mean they're right. not going to bang a 22 year old on the, behind your back. Either. Right, right, right. That's what you have to understand because if I'm an older guy and I see some girl She's 25. I see her for two days out of the week. Well, that's just two days. What she's doing those other days. Right. Well, that's when you have to remove. That's the other stuff that we teach. You got to remove the emotional attachment. You I, don't know these women. It's just your turn. Right. And I think that's the big thing that guys, it's kind of ironic, really, that women really had, man, they had shit good. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was a younger man, no, nah, I didn't have everything together. You know, I was still growing. I was still, I was still building my bank and, and finding my way in life. But there were women that, man, I would have taken a bullet for them. Like, man, I love this girl. Ooh, uh, you know, she is my world kind of thing, right? And, as, and if she had stayed with me, she'd be reaping all the rewards of, of either my success or what I bring to the table. But, but since they throw that away, I think a lot of guys, either they find content like ours or as a lot of times we'll say, look, we don't invite, we don't go out recruiting for the manosphere. We just stand there and hold the door open and, and the guys come in. And I think what happens is these guys that are sold on the, the picket fence and the house and the she'll love you forever and you just got to be a good man and provide, those guys get slapped with real life. And, and when they get to be our age, I can tell you now, will I ever love a woman again? Yeah, probably. How, how far will that love go? That love will go to where I'll be like, I got this, so don't worry about that, and I'll, I'll support you, and I got that. And if she says, hey, you know what? I, th I think I'm, I'm – I, I, either I cheated on you or I think I'm leaving you, my emotional response would be like, all right, good luck. This and, and that's as far as, as men are – at least most men today are willing to invest in a woman. Doesn't mean they're going to treat them bad. They'll treat them good. But the days of baby, I would do anything for you are over, and women are the one that ended that. They ended it and they're asking for it back. But at the same time, they're asking to be in the streets. It's it's so weird. It's weird to. You to be a traditional doing. man and bring all yeah. the things that traditional men bring. But also, I'm going to have a body count in the hundreds and not be able to cook and not want to clean and make my own I'm money. I'm going to girls' case. nights out. That's and I'm it. traveling with my girls. Well, you know, the funny thing is, the you know, people don't think that this manosphere or the these red pills or whatever uh, have benefited men. The shaming language that we used to get four years ago, uh, three years ago, it's no longer has an effect on us, right? right so right. because we've been able to teach men how to overcome those objections. Oh, well, you're just gay. Who hurt you? Yeah, you hurt. Who's hurting you? And now um, after years of them doing that, now they know we're immune to an extent to that. And now they got nothing. Right. And exactly. so they're either going to hardcore shame you go really hard or they're crying now. Oh, my gosh. I just can't. I've never had. And so they're breaking down. Again, one thing I want to say here, because not everybody's has these experiences. And congratulations. I mean, I don't know why you're watching us, but uh, you're here going to argue. What is this? This is just ridiculous. And 
Some people haven't had these experiences in the dynamics yet, or they have it because they either had money, status, success, or the women have already been traditional and you guys were a perfect match since college. Yep. Congratulations. I mean, you're the rare exception to the rule that actually proves the rule. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the the days of, you know, when I first started this channel, which is what, what I think two years ago or something like that, and you obviously started before that, we get a lot of the, the I don't get many women coming on and, and harshing on me because like I've said many times, like I don't, I don't hate women. Uh, let me see. As a matter of fact, I even made this for it. And some, I assume, are good people. Like, I got no hate on the ladies. Yep. Uh, but all I say is, look, you've decided the rules to the game, but you didn't tell us. And it took us a little while to find out. And now yep. we've learned the game. And, hey, we're just saying, okay, we'll play, we'll play it the way you want to play it. And now they're angry about that. And, and I think that's what I find interesting is that I've, I've watched – I don't know how many videos of yours or other people. And I've never had heard you say like, okay, we hate women. We dislike, we're going to do this, use them for that. No, we've always said, Hey, be upfront, be an honest man, you know, let them know where you stand. And, and if they go play the game, just say, okay, I, I agree to play by your terms and, and rules. And now for some reason, they're mad that we're doing it. They're mad. Yeah. Yeah. I caught, we caught them double dipping. Basically, we caught them double dipping. They were they were had it over here. They had it good and a little stability. And then they were trying to like, oh, no, but we could go out and do this and we could go out and I can talk to my ex-boyfriend and I could go have dinner with my ex-husband. And and I we caught them double dipping. Right. And then when we pulled their card, now they're like, hey, wait a minute. No, no, no. Uh, so I encourage guys to be really non-committal unless she's overly committed to you. Right. And she has to be willing to protect your interests. Not this whole, well, I'm a good woman. Give me a try. And then you still got the laws behind you. Right. She's still double dipping. Um, and then when you go out and do something, she penalizes you. So we want to make you guys aware because not everybody's going to just go their own way. And not everybody. There's people that really want to find a woman. And that day it's going to come. She's going to come here. She's going to bat her eyes. She's going to say, no, I'll mop up the floor every day. I'll be happy. I'm happy to do it for you. Well, right. she Just know everything's temporary. Well, there's, uh, with women. well, there's a reason why, you know, there's the 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 marriage jokes and the like, when's the last time she, you get a, a, a blow is, is the last time she says I do or, yes. or when she says I do, then she doesn't. I mean, why, why? Why do we all know that? Like you and I have never talked about that. It's yep. because we know we know it's, it's true. It, we it's know going, the, it's coming down. To, it's Guys, I can't I always say it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Right, right. Women right. always change. They're going to bait and switch you. It's a part of what they do. It's not a negative characteristic, and this is what we always want to tell men. The things we describe about them, we're not saying, I'm not saying we hate it. It's just like, look out for it. Right. Because it's going to come. You think it's not going to come. Well, not my girl. Okay. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Everybody, watch, everybody right. watching this, raise your hand if, if your girl that burnt you beyond to a crisp said at one point or another, I'm not like that. I'm different I'm from like all that. the other girls. Yep. I mean, and I would never do that to you. Oh, never. I would never do that. No. Oh, what do you mean? I'm oh, different. I can't, but here's another one because I deal with younger women and, uh, you know, I describe these things. They watch my content too sometimes. Right. Or they follow me on Instagram. And they're like, I can't believe a wife would avoid sex with the husband. Just wait. I, I just don't understand. And I'm going, yeah, because you're young. Yep. And yep. you're not married. And you don't have that uh, situation where – uh, the guy's never going to cheat on you. He has to come back home to you. Right. And then he's not the guy you see him every day. And right. he sees you in less makeup. And you're just like, I'll put it on the back burner today because the kids are here. Right. Uh, and then it, it slowly happens to where men are, they they go in separate rooms. He fall asleep on the couch. Yeah. Um, and they're not having sex over periods of time. It happens over and over and over again. If you enjoy content like this, you can find the full unedited video over at betterbachelor.locals.com.